Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today has the title of Countryside, 8 by 12 inch, and uh, basically an earth, earth tone painting. It's not like mono, uh, a mono pigment type painting. Um, colors used like uh, yellow ochre, raw umber, burn umber. Uh, probably a bit of that um, nice brown ochre from uh, um, Old Holland. It's a color you might want to look into. You know, I got into that um, because uh, of all my struggles with the, uh, and you'd know about this in the uh, if you were in the members area because uh, you'll hear it on on the, the live version of these uh, painting sessions, which is you know. I love raw umber. It's such a useful color. Um, I use it for basically making other colors more um, natural. Um, and in mixes it's fine, but a lot of times in a painting where I really want to feature that color, uh, the excessive transparency of it um, will uh, just really give me a headache. So I've been really trying to um, identify an opaque version of it which doesn't actually exist but the closest I've got is to mix in some brown ochre with the raw umber and the brown ochre has a fair fairly good amount of opacity in it so um, that gives you a pretty good result and I've so I've been using that for these sorts of paintings funny enough you know <clears throat> that transparency aspect of raw umber uh, usually works in its favor in color mixes because let's say um, well let's talk about like I'm not doing any like real blues in this painting or any, not even any any blues not just not real blues um, say you're mixing a blue you know you it looks fake you throw some raw umber in there you're good you're good to go that's that's what raw umber can do for you can dirty up your colors and make them feel natural yeah, just had to edit a little bit out there. <laughs> really hot here. Oh my goodness, muggy and, and, and rainy, and but really hot. Guy like I guess the um, American South would be right. Uh, we're we're speaking to you from New Zealand today, even though you go, well, you sound like you're an American. I am. I'm an expat living here in New Zealand and painting here, and. Um, very happy to be talking with you today. So let's talk a little bit about this painting here. We went off on the, of course, you know, this is the tangent channel. Um, the reference for this was Leonard Misson, a pictorialist photographer, by by a long ways the most prolific. Um, this looks to me to be um, south of France. Could be wrong. It's definitely France. Interestingly, a few days after this, I did another painting, um, which had, um, you know, I thought similar kind of composition. That painting I haven't put up on the channel yet. Oh, by the way, I painted this back in December. I just haven't got it to you. I've just been waiting for now because mm, that was the perfect time, uh, which was look looked like it was taken from the other side. So we see like a little, I kind of painted it like it was a lake or whatever, but um, it could be a clearing or whatever. And um, the painting I did a few days later, coincidentally, was like, you, you walk through those trees, turn around and take a photo. You would have had that. Uh, pictorialism was a movement in photography, uh, not a huge movement, but a, a significant movement historically, because it uh, basically um, entailed a painting-like approach to photography. So. Lots of different techniques were employed from dialing back certain uh, points of the uh, fo focus aspect of photography to get a softer feeling. Um, definitely techniques were employed when printing uh, the photographs a lot of times on maybe a textured paper or making a direct contact uh, print from a... Uh, you can already tell I'm on my depth because I'm no kind of photographer, but I want to say some sort of silver oxide plate and things like that. Uh, just put pictorialism into a search engine, and uh, heck, the first thing I do is switch it to image mode, and uh, you'll see, whoa. I like to use these uh, for uh, painting reference a lot of times because 
there already have a very pictorial sort of composition so one of the main things that I have to do when using my own photographs is edit out a lot of things that don't work well with the composition um, because I'm not a photographer I, I have some good gear um, but basically I have to ignore certain aspects or I have to take a photo that has maybe a lot of potential to make a good painting but um, I have to edit things around or maybe put a road in or definitely uh, I'm always changing the skies and things so but pictorialism was you know um, well for one they're doing you know they didn't have the advantage of full color so although having that as a is that an advantage or disadvantage you know that's hard to say it could be a real advantage especially if you're trying to make art um, as we know you know when <clears throat> you've ever taken one of your photographs and maybe created it to black and white and started applying filters and things to it you know things get far more artistic uh, pretty rapidly um, anyway I've had uh, a pretty small uh, bit of photo reference but that doesn't matter either I want to I always want to get that out there to you guys as you know you may have something that's very small in resolution that's okay because really what you want is the mm, the tonal qualities the compositional qualities textural qualities are going to suffer of course with less resolution but you're going to be bringing texture into play just with your brush strokes and a lot of what I've been doing for the last year um, since I started uh, you know kind of work my way out of uh, for the most part working on texture boards mostly I'm working on smooth boards I have to create that texture uh, with my brush strokes alone yeah and uh, that's fine um, I'm getting you know pretty adept at doing that um, by the way, so you can see uh, first I'm coming in with some yellow ochre, that's some white. It might be lead white, it's hard to say. Um, I I do love lead white. Uh, the thing is like it has um, not a lot of opacity, so quite often I might have lead white and, uh, and titanium white, both on my palette. For many years I was mixing both of them together. Uh, I had a 50-50 mix and that actually is a good solution you should try that too and if you haven't played with lead white you really should because um, especially say if you're going after master type studies and things uh, it's good to remember that uh, painters didn't have titanium white until maybe 20 years or so into the 20th century so uh, it's taken me, it took me a while to get the, the uh, titanium white is like maybe 11 times more opaque than lead white. Uh, so it definitely took me, it, it, titanium white can give you issues and problems with chalkiness. Um, that's not such a problem in a lot of painting uh, situations. Um, but you'd, you'd find if you tried yourself out a tube of lead white um, that uh, you could throw it into mixes where you could never put titanium white and you won't have an issue with chalkiness. On the other side, you could definitely have some issues with, wow, I got to throw a lot of paint in here to get this to go where I want it to go, um, where even it's just a small dot of titanium white would have done the job. So anyway, um, we're kind of leaning pretty heavily on the board color here. As a matter of fact, I'd say that whole top portion of the painting, I really enjoyed just kind of leaving that. For the most part alone i went in there with some of that brown ochre that we talked about a minute ago and uh, i did lean on that color a bit um this has that little figure on it and when people see this in my uh studio they, oh god i got a figure figure they get excited because usually i don't put figures in my work um but you know leonard had it there had him there and um i had to do a little more work he's a little stout at the moment but um that's all good it was you know a nice element of Leonard's uh, painting but definitely making my point that uh, one of the reasons I don't like to put figures into my landscapes is they tend to automatically become the focal point every people being people we care about people so if we see a person or something in a landscape and uh, for my part I'm not terribly into narrative in my work um, Implied narrative is great, but uh, the second you have it, like, uh, already with this figure, people, what's he doing? Is he, is he standing in a boat and rowing it, or is that, is he threshing? Or I said, I don't know. I just kind of copied what was there. You know, I can't answer your question. 
but you know I don't really care because he could have just been another part of a tree you know as far as I was concerned anyway uh, we, we digress as always so what's the value of doing this kind of painting well um, oh yeah I want to uh, pump up the uh, the uh, this is a great one to be in the members area um, because I will give you the full there's a full mixing session and not a lot of colors were in this so that went pretty quick but you would get full insight into my approach but um, you know for for one you may uh, may not have a lot of time <clears throat> And so one of the uh, one of the options you have uh, to make a painting is to make just a, a sepia tone painting or an earth tone painting. Or a lot of times I'll make a gray gray scale painting, uh, monochromatic, just black and white. And I'll mix a middle gray from those two. Or there was a whole series of paintings I did about a year ago. That were... Um, to sepia based they probably about oh, I don't know half a dozen no a dozen or more but maybe 12 to 18 paintings um, and I showed a lot of those in the show I had and actually sold quite a few too so don't think you won't don't be able to sell it because it's a sepia tone um, those were all five by sevens and they were you know priced very well um, speaking of this will be in my store um, and I'll price this very well too. I'm going to be um, uh, pricing this at around that 200 US mark, 199 to be precise. And if you, uh, oh, it's a lovely painting. Yeah, it would look great in a nice wood frame. Actually, it look good in a gold leaf frame as well, even a black frame. Yeah, it looks awesome in a frame. I have to say, I'm a big believer in framing my work. Um, and you know, you could be surprised. You don't just have to have a fancy frame. Fancy frames are nice, but um, almost any frame. Uh, what I like about frames is that it really it reinforces that window concept where you're looking through a window at a scene. You know, that is uh, an enchanting idea. It's sort of magical. Um, and while that idea is operative uh, without a frame, it's totally operative with a frame because a frame creates a bit of a buffer between the wall or the area around the picture and the picture itself. Um, and much like a window sill would with a window, it's very seldom you'll see a window without some sort of trim or, or sill around it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm real happy with this painting. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching me do it. We got another minute or so, but. Um, yeah, it took me a while to share it, uh, not because I don't love it, I really do love it, uh, but, but mostly because um, uh, other things kind of, you know, jumped in there in, in the way, and um, it's good though, because uh, I, have a, I have several coming up that I know you're going to love. Uh, one is in Love My 14, a nest study that already looks amazing, but uh, the little fiddly bits that uh, he likes to throw in sometimes, it'll little dashes and dots of leaves and things uh, were sort of impossible to do in the original color session so I just gave that a coat of liquid um, a couple days back so that'll be ready for me tomorrow and I have a few others like that that are just ready for some finishing um, approaches and a lot of times I hesitate to do that uh, because uh, uh, of uh, several of the last paintings if it goes into the second painting uh, session uh, the previous day's work goes very matte and it doesn't give you a true idea of what the painting looks like so whereas in a case like this the whole thing was done in one go the color is all fresh so it all has um, you don't have that issue with the paint going matte and in fact you talk about your earth pigments they always go matte your black goes matte your umber goes matte your burn umber goes matte heck probably even that yellow uh, ochre I'm, or brown ochre I just mentioned goes matte it all goes mad. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. I'll come back real soon with another video. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and check out that members area. It's six bucks uh, a month. And if you, uh, you know, really want to support me, go and buy a painting from my store. A lot of you have been doing that, and uh, I don't mind telling you I just invested some of that money in a little electric uh, scooter to get me from home to the studio because gas has been getting crazy out here. Anyway, until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family. <laughs>